Hello wonderful people! Today we're going to be drawing a really cute sneaky little cat and to follow along this tutorial all you need is your favorite digital art software as well as any kind of drawing brush that you know you like and you're comfortable with. If you don't know me my name is Genevieve and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. So if you're new make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the weekly videos and so that you can join our wonderful creative community. With that said grab your drawing tools and let's get started. A really fun thing about this tutorial is that it is entirely customizable. So I'm going to be drawing a black cat on a mustard yellow background, but you can change the color of the cat, you can change the color of background to have whatever other kind of piece as you desire. Now one thing to keep in mind though is I will be posting probably 30 minutes or so after this video goes out an animation tutorial based on this illustration. So if you want to follow along this animation tutorial, make sure that here, even if you customize the colors and maybe even the shape of the animals and the different objects, make sure you still use the same layer structure so that when we're ready to animate, it all still makes sense. And we're going to jump straight into it by drawing the cat, which is the first customization option you have. You can pick whatever color you want here. And if you want to use the exact same colors I will be using throughout this video, I'm always going to add the Xcode on the top right of the screen right here whenever I pick a new color. So you could just take that and then put that in your color selector. For example, if you're working like me in Procreate, you would open up your color menu here, select value at the bottom and add the hex code right here. That being said here, again, like I mentioned, I'm just gonna start with a very simple neutral charcoal. So a gray that doesn't have any color to it and almost fully dark, but not quite black. And as I mentioned in the intro, you can really use whichever brush you know you're comfortable with for this video. We're not doing anything fancy with fancy brushes at all. I'm gonna do my best to suggest free brushes that you can find in Procreate if that is the software you're using. I'm also going to give you tips on finding alternatives if you are working in a different software. And last but not least, I'm going to suggest a few brushes that you can find within my Ultimate Illustration Bundle. Now these brushes are not essential at all, but they're the brushes that I use daily when I'm not filming YouTube videos or when I'm working on children's books and stuff like that that and so if you do want to check them out they will be linked in the description below and there's always a special promo code for the YouTube people but again not essential at all. So here honestly you could just work with a basic round brush if you want that would work completely fine because we're just going to be trying to draw a silhouette of the cat. That being said because the illustration is so simple I'm going to try and personally add a bit of texture as I go and so for that you could try to find a brush that has pencil in the name. So if you're working with free Procreate brushes, you could go in the sketching pack that comes with the app and picking something like the HB pencil or the 6B pencil. Again, if you're working in a different software, anything you're comfortable with or a brush that has the word pencil in its name. In my case here, I'm going to be working with the everything brush that comes with my illustration bundle. So in the texture pack at the very top of the list, the everything brush right here. And throughout this entire video, honestly, the brush size is going to be totally up to you. There's nothing like just testing it out before you start, but it doesn't need to be precise in any way because we're mostly just drawing silhouettes. So there's no such thing as, I don't know, setting your brush to 3% and then changing it to 5%. It's really just a case of finding and using what you are comfortable with. So the first thing we're going to do here is just drawing the body of the cat, which is going to be a semicircle. So you can just start with a simple outline and then you can drop your color inside the outline to fill it in. Now if you are working in Procreate and if you are using a brush that has some texture to it, you might need to adjust the threshold when you drop the color so that it fills as much as the nook and crannies on the outlines as possible. The way to do that though is very simple. All you have to do is hold your pencil on the screen when you drop the color and then move it towards the right to increase the threshold or towards the left to decrease the threshold. So the goal here when doing that is always just trying to find the moment right before the color fills in the entire screen. So in my case, 86%. Now, once we have the semicircle, which is going to become the body of the cat, we're going to draw a kind of an ellipse or flattened circle for the head of the cat. And this circle is going to start a little bit past the middle of this semicircle, so a little bit more towards the right. 
And I say circle, but honestly, it can be quite loose and messy at this stage. So now that we have this basic structure of the body and the head, we're just going to refine how they connect. I think this part of the neck, the back of the neck, is fine, but I want the front to be a little bit softer. So all we're going to do is we're going to curve the front of the body a little bit more. And then instead of having this corner here, we're also going to curve the front of the neck. So essentially we're creating this S-curve right here from the head to the body. Now from there, we're going to add the ears on top of the head, which is super simple. It's just two huge triangles. And we might add a bit of a cheek just by extending this side of the head circle. Now I feel like my body could be a little bit rounder and cuter, so I'm just going to come back in and make the back even more arched. Although that's way too much, a little bit less than that. And I might also just thicken this bottom section here, making it even rounder towards the front. And from there, all we have left to do in terms of the cat silhouette is add a bit of a tail, as well as just cleaning up any weird texture that we have inside the shapes. So the tail is very easy. All you're going to do is extend the bottom of the body towards the left. And then draw the top of the tail, which can be any thickness as you desire. And then we're just going to have the tail kind of flip over the shelf. And so for that, all you have to do is start from the top section of the tail right here and draw a huge side S-curve. Then once you have the S-curve, all you have to do is complete the tail by adding the thickness of it. Just like that. So really, that's it for the Scylla of the Cat. Nothing more complicated than that. That being said, you might want to refine it a little bit if you notice that, like I mentioned, you have some weird textures within the silhouette. You could definitely go over and just color over those. You might also want to add some extra little hair strands on the back. So just these very simple triangular shape. They're not essential at all, but I think it just makes the cat look a little bit more fun, I guess. Maybe adding a small one on the front right here as well. Really here, it is nothing fancy, but it is worth taking the time to tweak your silhouette until you're super, super happy with it. So feel free to pause the video here if you need a little bit more time to play with the cat silhouette. Otherwise, we're going to keep going by drawing a paw on a separate layer so that if you want to follow along with the animation, we can animate a little paw that pokes out and kick an object off the shelf. Now, if you're not planning on following along with the next tutorial, which is going to be animating the cat, you could just draw the paw on the same layer. But in my case, I do want to animate this cat, so I'm going to draw the paw on a separate layer so that I can easily move it around. So if that's the case for you as well, go ahead and open your layer menu. And we are going to start by renaming the layer on which we've been working. So right now I just have layer one, but I'm going to rename it to cat. So just tapping on the layer, selecting the rename option here at the top. And from there, we're going to create a new layer that we're going to put above the cat layer. And we are going to rename this new layer to paw. 
Now drawing the paw is also going to be very easy. Similarly to what we did for the tail, we're just going to start by extending the line of the body, but this time towards the right. And then we're going to connect that line or the front of that line to the body using a slight curve. Great, now from there we're going to draw the eyeballs, and the eyeballs I do recommend we draw them on a separate layer just so we can move them around very easily if needed. So go ahead and create a new layer. This one put it below the paw, but above the cat obviously. And rename it to eyeballs. And here we're going to keep it super simple, we're just going to draw two big white circles. So you can just go ahead and pick pure white. Sticking with the same brush we've been using, we're really just going to be using that one brush for the entire video, so I'm not even going to mention it anymore. And zooming onto the face of your cat, and drawing two big wide circles. Oops. Now here, if you feel like your circles are not exactly how you want them to be, because we drew them on a separate layer, it's really easy to move them around and resize them as you desire. So for that, all you can do is just use any kind of selection tool you have, so in Procreate there's one right here at the top, and draw a selection around whichever eyeball you want to move. So let's say I want to move this one, here we go. And then using an arrow tool in Procreate it is right next to the selection tool, here we go and just moving the shape around until it is exactly where you want it to be. Now you could also resize it. I feel like mine is a good size. So I'm just going to keep it as is, but really here, take the time to make sure you're super happy with the eyeballs. Then once you are happy with the eyeballs, we're going to move on to drawing the pupils and the pupils, we are going to draw them on another layer, just so that if you do want to do the animation with me later down the road, we can move them around very easily. So once more, just creating a new layer below the paw, but above the eyeballs and renaming that new layer to eyes. Now here for the eyes, I'm going to go with pure black. So super simple once more, nothing fancy here, nothing complicated. And here for the pupil, you could go with a circle if you want, but I'm going to go with more of a vertical oval. If you are enjoying this tutorial so far, please consider giving the video a like and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Now I know everyone on YouTube is asking you to do that, but believe it or not, it really is a great way to support and help your favorite creators because it essentially tells YouTube to take the video and show it to more people. So thanks for helping. Now from there, we're also going to add some whiskers and little hair details onto the cat. And for that, we're going to create another layer, again, just so that we can move stuff around if needed. But once we're done with that, we're going to merge the layer back with the cat shape. So if you wanted, you could just draw them straight onto the cat shape for now. But again, I'm going to create a new layer just for safety. So new layer below the paw, below the eyes, below the eyeballs, but above the cat. But I'm not even going to bother renaming it because, again, it's just going to be merged with the cat layer in a few seconds. Now, if you wanted here, you could draw a nose and a mouth, but I'm not going to do that because I want really the main part of the facial expression to come from the eyes. So I'm not going to add anything else that could distract from the eyes, but I am going to add, again, some whiskers just to make the face look a little bit more interesting. So really simple here, still in black, I'm just going to draw three long lines on the cheeks.
Maybe taking advantage of that separate layer just to move one side of the whiskers. There we go. Now I'm also going to add some pale gray details, just a few hair strands here and there to make the cat a little bit more interesting once more. And so for that, we're just going to pick a lighter version of whatever color we use for the cat body. So in my case, it was just a neutral gray, but I'm still gonna color pick it just to show you. And just make it a little bit lighter. So we don't wanna go too light because we don't want those hair strands to really catch the eye too much. We just want them to be slightly there. So I'm just going to add a few groups of maybe two or three hair strands here and there over the cat again, just to bring a little bit more life to it. So probably three small ones here, maybe a few on the back as well, because we already have this texture. Oops, that's way too big though. <laughs> there we go. Maybe a couple there. And maybe also just dividing the two sections of the tail that are on top of each other. So just following the front line right here and using that to divide the tail. Now, if you are drawing a specific cat, so not just a random black cat like me, at this stage, you could go ahead and add any kind of marking that the cat has. So maybe a white paw, maybe some stripes on the back, whatever you need, you would go ahead and add it there. And once you're done with that, we're going to merge those potential details that you might have added, as well as the whiskers and the hair strands with the basic cat shape so that it's just on one big cat layer. So feel free to pause the video here if you want to add more details. Otherwise, once more, we're going to merge the layers and then we're going to move on to the background. Now, once you have all the details on the cat, we're going to merge the layers. If you don't plan on animating anything, you could just merge all the layers at this stage. But if you are planning on animating the cat in the next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to merge the eyeballs, any kind of cat details you have in terms of texture, whiskers and whatever, as well as the cat base silhouette, but we are not going to merge the paw and the eyes. So in my case, it would be eyeball, layer five, and cat. And to merge layers in Procreate, it's really easy. All you're doing is you're taking two fingers and you're squishing the layers together. Great, so at this stage, we're ready to start drawing the background, which is going to be really easy and also highly customizable, both in terms of the colors as well as what you draw in the background. So as I mentioned in the intro, I'm going to be drawing using a base mustard yellow. But if you're not a fan of yellow, not a problem. You could just pick whatever other base hue you desire. So blue, red, purple, orange, green, whatever you want. And then just change that base color using the tips I'm going to give you. So for me, again, I'm just going to apply those tips on a yellow, but you could apply them on whatever you want. And even beyond that, you could use more normal colors and that could really work as well. Again, as long as you keep the same layer structure, whatever you draw here is totally up to you. So the first thing we're going to do is simply setting the background color we want. So in my case here, I'm gonna pick a mustard yellow, which is going to be my base color, but you could pick whatever you want. And you can think of this color as the color of the wall behind the shelf. So if you are working in Procreate, there is always a background color layer that comes with any canvas that you create. So you could just select that and set your color to whatever you want. That being said, if you are working in a different software that doesn't just have a background color layer here, no problem. Just create a new background or create a new layer, sorry. Put it below everything you have so far, rename that new layer to background and just drop your color on top of it to fill it in. That being said, again, here in Procreate, you can just select the background color layer and set whatever color you want. And here, I'm just gonna go with this super intense mustard yellow, which as you can see is a little bit more on the orangey side than the green side. And it is fully bright, meaning it doesn't have black in it, but it has all the white in it that you can have. And it is really quite saturated. Now, if you're going for the same graphic style as I am going for, the main idea here in terms of the other color is going to be starting from this base color and then drawing the silhouettes of the different elements, whatever they are, with just a lighter version of that base color. And then once we have all the silhouettes, we're going to come back in and draw outlines around these elements using a darker version of this base color. 
So here I'm just going to start by drawing a shelf. Now you could draw something else. You could draw a table, whatever you want. The idea is to have the cat resting on something, obviously, and making sure it is pretty close to the edge of whatever it's resting on so that we can pretend that it's pushing off some object over the edge. So for that, go ahead and just create a new layer, making sure it is below any cat layer you have, but above your background, of course and rename it to whatever element you want the cat to be resting on. So in my case, I'm just going to rename it to shelf. And here you can pick whatever color you want. If you're using more normal colors, you could pick a brown or something like that. Or otherwise, as I mentioned, we're just going to color pick the base color we have for the background. And we're going to bring it towards the white in our color selector to make it lighter. So here it means I'm still fully bright, but this time I'm more middle of the way in terms of saturation, making the color appear a little bit less intense, a little bit paler. Otherwise here, again, still with the same brush, we're keeping the same brush for everything. We're just going to draw a silhouette of the element your cat is resting on. So a shelf is going to be very easy. You're just going to draw two horizontal lines and then fill that in with your base color. Now I'm also going to add a bit of a thickness to the shelf, so just going back with a slightly darker version of that pale yellow. We don't want it to be as dark as the background, otherwise we won't see the thickness, but just a tiny little bit darker. Just this kind of difference. And then I'm going to draw another horizontal line. And then fill in this new section. So as you can see, it's almost the exact same color, but there's a slight difference which helps see the volume of the shelf. Now to make the shelf look a little bit more interesting and make the bottom of the illustration look a little bit more interesting as well, I'm going to add some brackets. So very simple, just two small rectangles. And to make these brackets look like they are on the wall and not just poking out of this thickness, we're going to add a bit of a shadow, which is going to be super simple. And for that shadow, we're actually going to go with a slightly darker version of the background because, again, it is a shadow. So you can just color pick your background or your main color and move it just the tiniest bit towards the bottom right of your color selector here, meaning you're going to start adding a bit of black, so lowering the brightness, and you're going to increase this slider here, which is the saturation. But again, an easier way to visualize it is just bring your color from wherever it was down towards the bottom right corner of your color selector. And then with that color, just draw a bit of a diagonal line going through the bracket like this. And then use that diagonal line to create a pentagon that aligns with the bottom of the shelf. And then if you fill that in, it's going to create a very simple yet super nice little shadow. So we're going to repeat the exact same thing on the other side, nothing fancy. Now from there, we're going to add a few elements around the cat. Those can be really whatever you want. I love plants, so I'm going to have two vases on the left side and then one potted plant on the right side, but it could really be whatever you desire here. But I feel like my cat is taking too much space on the shelf for me to be able to add stuff around it. So if that is the case for you as well, it's a very easy fix, again, because everything is on separate layers. So all you would have to do to move the cat around is just selecting all the layers that you have that are relating to the cat, but not anything else. And so in Procreate, to select multiple layers, all you have to do is swipe them towards the right with one finger. And then using an arrow tool, making sure whatever arrow tool you have is set to uniform so you don't change the proportions of the cat. You can then either make it smaller if you need or just move it around the shelf depending on what was the problem in terms of your own composition. Now 
Now from there we're just going to draw the other elements starting with the silhouettes and once we have everything we're going to come back in and add the outlines which is going to transform the whole piece because right now I'll give it to you it doesn't necessarily look the best. So I'm just going to start with the vases that are behind the cat. Again, you could draw something else. We really just want to help the composition by adding a little bit of something here. So keeping it simple is probably your best bet. And also keeping it on a separate layer. So just creating a new layer between the shelf and the cat layers. And renaming that layer to whatever element you're about to draw. So in my case, I said I was going to draw vases. So I'm going to rename my layer to vases. And here I'm just going to color pick the color I use for the thickness of the shelf. Honestly, you could go with whatever, as long as it's paler than the background, that's all that matters. And I'm just going to draw two super basic vases. So one that is this kind of triangle or py pyramid, I guess, and one cylinder. And so the pyramid is just going to be two slightly angled lines. Nothing complicated. Again, we're keeping it super, super basic making sure we connect the bottom so that we can fill it in. And then the top is going to be a slight curve. Then the cylinder, super simple, two slightly longer vertical lines, so parallel vertical lines, although they don't need to be perfectly parallel at all. With a slightly curved bottom and top, both curved outwards. So like this, and like this. Now I'm not going to add the branches just yet in the vases because I'm essentially going to treat the branches as outlines, but I am going to add some highlights because I do want the vases to look a little bit more like glass, so I do want them to be glossy. So for the eyelids, you're really going to go a super, super pale version of your base color. Not quite white, otherwise it's going to draw the eye too much and we don't want the main focus to be these vases at all. But we do want it to look like highlights, so probably something kind of like this. And then from there we're going to outline the sides of both of these shapes. And we're going to add essentially an inverted exclamation mark on the right side of the shapes as well. So starting with a bit of a dot, like this, and then adding a line that goes right down to the bottom, or almost the bottom. Great. Now before we add the outlines and the details and the vases, we're going to draw the elements that the cat is going to push off the shelf. So in my case, again, it's going to be a potted plant. And that is an element that you absolutely want to have on a separate layer, especially if you want to create the animation at the end. And that layer should be above everything so that it can be in front of the paw. So again, here, rename that layer to whatever you're going to be drawing. It could be a glass of water, a cup of tea. I'm going with a potted plant because I love plants. And I know I said all these silhouettes of these elements, I'm going to go and draw them with a paler version of my background color. But I'm going to cheat a little bit here. The actual pot I'm going to draw with the same color I use for the shadows on these brackets. I'm just going to color pick that. Otherwise, again, just start with your base color and make it either paler or darker, depending on what you're drawing, of course. Now, whatever element you're drawing, make sure it is touching the cat's paw here. Otherwise, it's not going to look like the cat is able to push it off the shelf, which would be a shame. And if you are drawing a potted plant, we're just going to start with a very simple square for the base. And I say square, but as you can see, it can be very rough. <laughs> And then we're going to draw a rectangle for that little lip around the pot, the very classic terracotta pot.
Now here, because I'm going to animate this plant falling, I'm going to use a plant that is really rigid, a snake plant, because if I was to use a plant with leaves, when the cat is pushing it and when it's falling, we wouldn't need to animate the leaves moving as well. And honestly, that's starting to get a little bit more intense than it needs to be for a beginner animation tutorial, which is going to be again in the next video. So here, yes, I'm going to stick with a very basic snake plant, but if you're not planning on animating the video, you could draw really whatever plant you want. Now for the snake plant, I'm just going to use again the same color I use for the thickness of the shelf. And I'm just going to draw these, I honestly do not know what they would be called, super long rounded triangles, making sure you have different heights and different thicknesses. And with that, it is time for the secret password. So if you've watched this final video, just let me know in the comments below which color you're using for your background or just the main color in general, actually. And as you may know, the secret password is a game that we play here on the channel. And believe it or not, the secret password not only is a game, but it does give me a lot of insight into how to edit and pace my videos better, which helps me create better tutorials for you guys. So again, if you've watched this far, just let me know in the comments below which color you're using for your background, and then we're going to keep going. So really here, something as simple as that totally works. Although we might add a bit of a pattern onto the plant and maybe a bit of a shadow on the pot. So I'm gonna start with the pattern on the plant for which I'm just going to color pick the color of the shelf. Again, you could go with something darker, lighter, doesn't matter, just pick a slight variation of your color. And then on top of each section of the plant, we're just going to go over and draw these little slightly curved lines. So again, really nothing precise here. When we add the outlines, it's going to make everything a little bit more crisp. But I think it is interesting to have a bit of a messier, I guess, pattern. Because again, the illustration is so simple, it's nice to have something a little bit more fun in terms of how we color the piece. Now we're also going to add a shadow onto the pot. So very simple, just color painting. Oops. <laughs> I say very simple and then it's not working. Just color picking the color you used for the pot, whatever it was, and make it a little bit darker. Not too much though, just the tiniest little bit. And then we're going to draw a curve that would be following that little lip on the top of the pot, just like you were outlining it. And then we're going to connect this side of the curve to the bottom of the pot using a huge C shape. And then you're just going to fill it in. Again, nothing fancy. But that way we have a little bit more volume within the pot. And the last tiny little thing we can do here before adding the outlines is adding shadows behind the cat and the vases just to make the piece again a tiny little bit more interesting. And also because we do have other shadows in the piece, it's kind of weird not having them behind a cat. And those shadows, we're just going to draw them straight onto the shelf layer that we have to keep it simple. And again, to keep it simple, we're going to use the shelf thickness color that we have. So just color picking that and then using it to draw a long shadow below and behind the cat, focusing that shadow towards the left side. So you can start a little bit under the belly, just a tiny little bit but then you're going to really just focus on extending it outwards towards the left. You can also add a bit of that shadow behind or on the side of the, the vases so like this. For now, it's going to look like it's the same color because it is the same color, but when we add the outlines, it's going to really separate everything, so it's totally fine. 
Now we're also going to add a shadow under the pot. Now if you're not animating this at the end, you can just add it straight onto the shelf layer. But if you are animating it, we need to draw the shadow with the pot layer so that when we move it, the shadow moves with the pot and doesn't just stay there, which would look super, super weird. So just go back onto, well, I said the pot, but whatever element your cat is pushing off the hedge or the shelf, the edge of the shelf. <laughs> so pot a plant in my case, but it could be whatever. And then we're going to draw just the smallest little shadow, making sure it is not overlapping with the cat's paw, of course, because that would not make sense. Great. Now, if you need more time to add more elements on your piece, take all the time you need. Feel free to pause the video here and add those elements. Otherwise, we're going to bring the piece together by adding some really neat but super simple outlines. Awesome. Now, the outlines are going to be super, super easy and simple here, especially if you're going with this graphic style like I am going for because we're just going to pick one color and use that for all of the outlines. If you're working with more normal colors, so if you have, for example, a green for the plant and then a brown for the shelf and then, I don't know, a blue for the vases, you could just color pick all the colors you use and make them darker as you go and then just outline the different elements with the different colors. Again, though, here I'm going with something super graphic, so we're just going to pick one dark version of our base color and use that for the outlines everywhere. So go ahead and locate whatever darker color you have. In my case, it was the shadow here on the pot. And then make the color darker by bringing it once more towards the bottom right of your color selector. Now we do want to have quite a bit of a difference here, so make sure you bring it down quite a lot. And the thickness of your outlines is completely up to you, but it is a good idea to keep them consistent throughout the whole piece, so make sure you test the size of your brush before you start. Again, no right or wrong answer here, it is totally up to you. I'm gonna go with this, I think. Although I'm noticing here my color, I think is a little bit too dark, so I'm just gonna make it a tiny, tiny bit paler. Maybe even more than that, why not? There we go. Otherwise from there, it's nothing fancy at all. We're just going to draw all the outlines, but make sure you keep the outlines on the different layers. So for example, the outlines of the shelf or whatever element your cat is resting on should be on that layer. The outlines for the vase should be on the vase layer and so forth again, so that if we do the animation, everything is still neatly organized. And again, there's nothing fancy here in terms of the outline. You just go and outlines the shape, except for the vases. I do have a few tips for you. So I'm going to start with those. The main tip being, if you want your vase to look transparent, make sure that instead of just drawing, for example, one outline here for the bottom and then keeping it as is, you also draw what would be the other side of the bottom. So because it is a cylinder here, I would have a full-on ellipse for the bottom. And same thing from the top, of course. And then otherwise just drawing the sides as you would with any other outlines or any other elements, I should say. Now you can obviously draw whatever you want in these vases, but I'm going to draw some super simple branches, starting with the one in the pyramid vase. So I'm going to draw two fairly long branches here. And then I'm going to add some super simple oval leaves alternating on either side of the branches. And I'm going to stop right above the opening of the vase. Now 
Now the other vase, I'm literally going to draw just a branch, so another slightly angled line. This time I'm going to thicken the bottom of this line a tiny little bit. And then add some very simple branches going on either side of the main branch. So maybe one here, one here, small one here, maybe one in the vase because otherwise it's really empty. Maybe small little one here as well. Yeah, honestly, as simple as that. And from there, otherwise, as I mentioned, we're just going to draw the other outlines, just making sure that we remember to change layers as we go. So I'm gonna go with the potted plant first. And then moving on to the shelf. Now, if you enjoyed this video and want to animate your cat, make sure you go ahead and check out this tutorial. I'm going to show you exactly how you can do it step by step. Otherwise, if you are not into animation, I have a bunch more cute animal tutorials you can follow along. But before we leave, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. And then click on either the playlist or the animation video and I will meet you right there.